How are you, Michael? I'm doing very well. Just the uh, usual craziness before our vacation Bible school starts next week. That's the thing we do here with children. So it's next starts next Monday evening. So it's just craziness. Oh, it's a good thing. It's good. It's a good kind of crazy. It's what we want. Yeah, well, it's a good thing that in spite of your busy schedule, you still allot the 30 minutes of your time to be with us today because we will be speaking about very a very important topic, which you discussed very well last time, last podcast, and that's why most of my friends wanted to listen to you again because I understand that prayer is really very important. It okay. is as important as the air that we breathe, you know, as far as Christianity is concerned. And thank you so much for sharing with us your knowledge. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again. It's uh, four o'clock here in the UK. This is Mary Angela Talk, broadcasting live from my home studio at Crazy at the Wheelchair United Kingdom. This is still Crazy Talks with Wise People. Well, I'm a connoisseur of wise people. That's what most people uh, think of me. And uh, well, I thank God that I'm always connected with the wisest people in the world. And our guest for today is another wise person. Um, well, he guested before, he already had guested before, but due to your insistent demand, he is with us again. And he's so good, so kind to um, have graced this. So again today. Well, he is the senior pastor of South End Baptist Church in Maryland. He is ministry professional with about 40 years of experience in local church ministry, which includes a decade of denominational service and as a board certified chaplain for the past two years. He has been married to his wife, Debbie, for 37 years. Wow. And are blessed with two daughters. Their oldest, Savannah, has been married to her husband, Josh, for almost eight years. And their youngest daughter, Olivia, is currently working and attending college. A very good pastor, a very good husband, a very good father, mom, and a very good podcaster here at TBC in TV. With warm welcome. Let's, Thank you so much. Uh, have him Thank you for the kind you words. I never thought of myself as a wise person. <laughs> yeah, Michael, <laughs> Pastor Michael Cooper. Yay. Michael, you are a very wise person because you have God in you. <laughs> you have God in you, yes. All right, Michael, we, wow, wow, wow. We have got a lot of questions for you here. Uh, some of these questions were actually sent to me by my friends. So one of those is how can we recognize that voice, God's voice? How can we be sure that we are praying in accordance to God's will? Because sometimes it's so difficult for us to determine God's will in our life. Um, is there such a thing as powerful and unpowerful prayer? Are intercessor, intercessor's prayers more powerful than those who are not? Uh, what are some hindrances to potent hindrances to a Prayer, powerful prayer life. What does it mean to pray in Jesus' name? Why do we need to ask God to cover us with his blood? How do we pray for salvation? What is a sinner's prayer? Oh, we've got a lot of things to cover. So now let's dive in. Let's start. So um, when we pray, you know, we hear a lot of people say like, I heard God. So how do Christians hear God? Hmm. That's a wonderful question uh, and uh, unfortunately very subjective in each person's experience. But according to the scripture, uh, as I understand it, we recognize God's voice because of who he is and who we are. And it lines up with the Bible, with scripture. Uh, God obviously would not tell us something or speak to us in a way that does not fit with scripture. The scripture describes God's voice to us. Uh, not like it did to Charlton Heston in the Ten Commandments movie that many of us have seen many times, where it's loud and booming. It tends to be more still, quiet, uh, almost like a whisper at times. And we often hear his voice uh, speak to us as we read his word. Uh, you may be reading his word and you read a passage. You may have read it several times, but for some reason, something you almost never saw, you, you seem like you've missed every time, comes out in a particular passage out of the word of God. And that's one way that God speaks to you. And you you recognize God's voice the more you spend time with him. 
uh, in communion, more, more you spend time in his word, uh, because that begins to help you get a glimpse of his character. And uh, in that, uh, closer to the relationship, you'll, you'll know when it's him, uh, because it, it and I don't think it, when I've heard his voice, it doesn't sound like I, oh, like I would have expected. It does, it's not big and booming. It's usually very quiet. Uh, mm -hmm. and like I said, it's very, I mean, it's not quiet in a sense it's, it's, it's soft, but it always lines up with what the scripture teaches about his character and who he is. Uh, it never contradicts what the Bible tells us about him. Uh, that's important. And it's usually not God telling me to do something that he hasn't already told me to do in his word. Uh, it always lines up with that. So that would be how you recognize it. I think John 10 is a great uh, text for people to go over to talk about that. He talks about that in John 10 when he says, as in the good shepherd, I, I'm the good shepherd and my sheep will know my voice as his sheep, as his followers we will recognize his voice because he, as the more we walk with him, the more we are be attuned to what he desires to, 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 to what he says to us and the way that he says it. Uh, and he speaks differently to each of us in different ways. Uh, so it just, it varies oftentimes with what needs to be said. Sometimes he can be rather in your face uh, for lack of, that's a term we use in our part of the world that describes he's very upfront and almost uh, a little aggressive. And other times it's, just like a, a gentle chide or whisper, just a reminder of, hey, uh, buddy, you're kind of going this way. You need to go that way. So okay. I don't know if that that's how I understand it. And that's kind of one of the things I think about when I in my own prayer life as I walk with God and seek to seek to follow him when I hear his voice. OK, can we also hear God's voice through, uh, you know, through an inner voice like uh, they call it intuition? Can we also hear God through our friends, through circumstances? Absolutely through our pastor, through our counselor, through our parents, um, through podcasts sometimes, um, is there a possibility that God speaks through us through uh, those things that I just mentioned? Absolutely. All of those are just different venues and ways that God speaks to us. Uh, he speaks to us through those who are close to us, those that, you know, maybe we hear a message and uh, from someone and, and, and God, the Holy Spirit reminds us that is him speaking through that person to us. Uh, it can be the wise counsel of a friend or a family member. Uh, it can be a lot of things. There's a lot of ways that God speaks to us, but any way that it, we know that it's God speaking to us is it will always be in line with his character and who he is in his word. That's the thing that we see. Uh, so that's, that's important, but yeah, you're right. There are a variety of ways. I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, study experiencing God by Dr. Henry Blackaby. Uh, it's been out for many years, but he talks about different ways you hear God's voice in that. Uh, and that's, we could spend all 30 of your minutes on that. We won't do that today, but that's what he talks about. And he articulates it extremely well uh, about what that looks like. And I'd encourage anybody that's watching to check out anything uh, that uh, Dr. Blackaby has shared. His son, Richard, does a lot of that now. It's Experiencing God. Just look them up. You can find them. They have a website where they have all kinds of resources and opportunities to help you as you walk with God and learn to listen to him in your prayer life and in your time with him. Well, is it also true that one of the determining factors is that you are at peace with what you're hearing? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, you. There's a, there's a sense of peace oftentimes when we're trying to make a decision, uh, trying to get direction. Uh, when God, uh, we know that God is in it, and when we finally say, "Okay, God, I want your way instead of my way," there is a peace to that. Uh, it doesn't mean it's going to be happy. It doesn't going to mean it's going to be comfortable. I mean, Jesus showed us that in the garden when he's praying to the father uh, and he, you know, asking for that, this cup to be removed from me. He says, I don't want to do this. Mm. And then he finally says, I want your will be done. Not my will. It's all about what you want. I will do it because you want it. And that's a, a, a hard thing for us to grasp that he was willing to do that. Uh, but that he was wanting to be so surrendered to the will of the father that he would do even things that were not uh, going to benefit him in a in a physical or fleshly or earthly way because he knew there was a greater purpose behind what God was doing, obviously. And our salvation was that purpose. And I'm grateful that our Savior was uh, so in tune with, with the Father in his prayer life. He's the, the greatest example in scriptures of prayer of what a prayer life looks like is, our, is Jesus Christ, our Savior. Because uh, there's so many examples of the way that he prayed, uh, the, the urgency, uh, the consistency with which he prayed the fervency that he prayed, all those things that he prayed demonstrate for us as his followers what it looks like. Mm, very well said. 
Um, well, there is a saying, you know, like we were told that we have to pray in accordance with God's will. Well, mm -hmm. this is not about the Bible, but, you know, some choices in life, like for those who are single, uh, can they pray for a specific person to be their wife or husband? Mm -hmm. um, can, uh, let's say, for those uh, just who graduated from high school, can they pray for a specific university? Um where God would like them to study. Um, for those who just graduated from the university, can they pray for a specific job or a specific company where they would like to work? So well, we how can, can they there. determine that you know they're praying in accordance with God's will? No, oh, that's a great question, a great way to think about it. I, I don't know that uh, praying for a specific you can, you can always do that. Always ask God. But what I would ask, I would encourage people is to ask for clarity. Say, God, I want to know what your will is with respect to this job. Maybe, you know, whatever company, pick the company's name that you want to work for. I'd love, I'd really love to work for this company, God. Uh, and would you make that possible? Is that what you want? And, and, but, but being submissive and surrender, knowing that maybe God doesn't have that plan for you at this time, or maybe not at all. Uh, but uh, and the same is with whom we will be spend the rest of our life. We should pray more than I think praying for a specific person. We pray, God, just give me wisdom, give me clarity, give me your insight as to whom you want me to marry. So when that person comes into our life, uh, we're 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 attuned to that. We our spirit senses that. Uh, it's uh, you know, I, I, it's it's dangerous in one way I would say to pray and ask God for a specific thing that we want. Uh, if it's not what God wants. I mean, he may give it to us. Sometimes he gives us things that we want and it isn't for our good, just to help us understand that, if that makes sense to, to folks. That's um, one of the struggles. Yeah. But um, I, we need to be specific in our prayers. I think you make a really good point in what you're saying. You should be specific and asking God, but but being realizing that whatever God wants may be a little different than what you want. Say, God, I, I want a job. I want to take care of my family and take care of the needs that I have. Father, I pray you'll open it up to me. And when it comes, Father, help me to know what it is. Give me give me clarity. Give me peace that this is the direction you want me to go, whatever that may be. And I believe that's, a, in a sense, is there should be always a lot of humility uh, as we go before the Father and trusting his hand rather than trying to force God's hand, I guess, if, if that makes sense what I'm saying. Uh, we want to make sure that we trust his hand and allow him to have his way. Mm, it makes sense. Yeah, thank you for sharing that with us because a lot of us here are a little bit confused about you know, God's will, what direction to take, you know. So thank you for that uh, advice. Um, you know, what is the best attitude when praying? Is it the assertive attitude? Because there are some people tell us like, be assertive to God, wrestle with God until you get the answer. Or is it an attitude of surrender, like, okay, God, mm, thy will be done. What is the right attitude? For, that's, know, that's, that's the chief attitude of surrender of whatever we want. There may be times of wrestling with God. There may be times when we try to say, God, I want this, or I believe this is best. And we try to force our will. I, I think um, obviously most of us remember uh, Jacob from the Old Testament who wrestled with mm. God, mm. trying to receive the blessing of God. Yes. Uh, and sometimes God wants us to be persistent uh, to understand the, our urgency for that. And sometimes God will allow that. You know, I, and I don't know how that all works uh, in the the providence of God and His will and all the things He does. But sometimes He He, he wants us in prayer to always be persistent uh, and to be faithful and and to continue to pray. Uh, you know, there might be, for example, of a person, a loved one we have that. Uh, those of us who are followers of Christ, we might have a loved one that has chosen not to follow that path and may have chosen a, a dangerous path for their life. And we persistently pray for them. We may have to wait years to see God do that work in their life to bring them back to where they need to be. Uh, but we are persistent and we plead with God. We we wrestle in a sense with God spiritually. We want God to do what only he can do to bring about change in that person's life. And there is there's absolutely nothing wrong with persistence in prayer. That'd be another aspect of prayer where we could once again, talk for hours about is, is our persistence. And Jesus okay. gives parables regarding that and describing that, what that should look like, that uh, it's it's not always about asking the right thing. I, sometimes we get caught up. I want to ask the very right thing. We were persistent and God, I just want what you want to do with this situation. Father, just have your way. Uh, and that's where that persistence comes in. If that makes, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. How about, um, 
Is there such a thing as powerful and unpowerful prayer? Because I heard one pastor before and said, like, if you, if uh, there are some people whose prayers just don't reach the heaven, uh, some prayers just reach the roof. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And some days it feels like that. Uh, I think, it, at least in my experience in ministry, there seem to be some people, and I think it comes from their faithfulness mm -hmm. and their persistency and their willingness to trust God, that it seems that they almost have an inside track, if that's a, a term to use, uh, to, to gain God's attention and get gain God's favor. I've been blessed to have many of those people in my life who pray for me, and I'm grateful for their prayers. Uh, and they always tend to be what I would call seasoned saints. They've been doing it for a long time, and they've been faithful and persistent. And uh, I think that's that's a pertinent, important aspect of prayer. Uh, I, I don't know if there's powerful or unpowerful, per se. It seems to be prayer doesn't seem to work. Uh, and that maybe maybe I'm praying out of God's will or I'm praying in a way that really isn't helpful. And and I, I perceive that as being, well, that that's just that wasn't powerful. Well, no, it wasn't. God, God's power, you know, powerful prayer, I believe, is faithful prayer. Uh, the, the power of our prayers does not reside in our ability to coerce God or to plead with God or to make a case with God. It basically relies on on God's willingness and power to accomplish whatever he desires through our prayers. Uh, and that's an important understanding, at least for me, to understand that it's not about what I'm able to do or how I'm able to impress God. It's more about what God is able to do. And as I'm humbly up before him, I realize that he's the one that accomplishes it all anyway. And I have to learn to trust him in that. Uh, but I have to be faithful and be consistent in that as I walk with him, allowing him to have his way and saying, God, I can't emphasize surrender enough. Whatever you want, God, that's what I want. I want, uh, you know, bend my will if it needs to be so that I learn to want the things that you want and seek the things that you want me to seek. Mm. Well, you've been a pastor for the past three decades and more. Uh, will you share with us some of your techniques in connecting with God? Well, just the times, uh, it often seems to be times when I'm most frustrated uh, or times when I have tried to do it my way or or even the way of the people that they're used to. And I'm, I'm like, OK, this isn't where it needs to be. But I just basically say, OK, God, I've tried my way many, many times over. It's now time for me to just quit trying my way and trust what you want to do. Father, help me see the path that you have for me. Help me to understand what you want me to do in respect to whatever that situation might be. And I can think of more than one instance, specifically at another church where I was serving at, we were kind of at a an impasse. We were not going anywhere. We were having some strife. And I just said, God, I'm, I'm tired of them trying to rebel against me or follow me. I don't want them to follow me. I want them to follow you. God, do whatever you need to do to in me to help that happen. And God really brought a real sense of humility into my life and uh, and uh, a work in me that really began to transform the way I communicated with people. And it seemed to be that was what impetus God used to begin to bring about the change in our church and really help our focus uh, to be doing the things that God wanted us to do. And it wasn't perfect, but it was a different direction. And I know in our own family's life, we've had times where we have prayed for direction uh, and wisdom, and we thought we knew the path. Uh, but it wasn't the path that God had for us. And sometimes God let us go on a path we wanted to, and that led to some strife and difficulty that we really weren't planning on. Uh, and we learned the lesson of that, of saying, God, okay, we want what you want. Uh, and uh, seeing God work in the lives of, I remember in particular when I was in youth ministry, we had a one of my students who, I don't know how else to say it, was rather rebellious and frustrating. And I had several of my ladies that prayed for us. They were part of our prayer team. Mm -hmm. And they prayed for him uh, consistently, and uh, he he struggled. I mean, it was probably about a year that they prayed for him on a regular basis, and then there was just a breakthrough in his life, and uh, his heart was was softened and opened to things of God, uh, and a humility came over him like he had not he had not demonstrated in that time, uh, and God God did that. You know, it wasn't you know because I was a great youth pastor. And had a great thing to say and something, it was the Holy Spirit that did the work in him. And I, he wasn't perfect, but he was changed. And that result of that was the work of the Holy Spirit in his life. And uh, that was just a fervent prayers of those that uh, were faithful to pray for him. And we see it, I think, in our own lives as we pray for those whom we care for. We might see it with a, a friend or a coworker or a family member. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll see that in time, God will work out his purpose in their life. But there are going to be days when it feels like you're just talking to the air, uh, but you are petitioning the creator of the universe and he is always listening, always available. I mean, I don't have to pick up a phone and, and dial him in. I just have to call on him and he's there and not, you know, and to me, that's, that's always been one of the most amazing things about prayer. So anyway, hope that answered the question you had there. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned about intercessors and because of their prayers, it solved some of their problems in church. Um, <laughs> this, I mean, maybe this could be a foolish question or something. I mean, um, are the intercessor prayers more powerful than the non the people are not called to be intercessors? I don't know if that's if they're powerful. I think part of that for those who are true intercessors, those who are faithful in that that uh, and and see that as their calling, mm -hmm. I just think they're more consistent and faithful in the process. They are more earnest. They are more diligent. Uh, they mm -hmm. tend to be those people that I've experienced that are I would consider intercessors. Those I have some in my church right now. That's what they are. They are just uh, they have a dogged determ determination to do what God has called them to do, and they're going to be consistent in praying. And that consistency uh, and that relationship i think is what uh, seems to cause their prayers to be more uh seem seem from the outside looking in that they are they're more faithful and that god responds to them uh i i do believe that some people do seem to have that connection with god uh in ways that some others don't and that just may be come out of that consistency and that humility and that relationship with god as they pray with him on a regular basis that they know that they know how to talk to god if that makes sense they know mm -hmm that their prayers are not just something they do because they have to. It's, it's a part of their life. Uh, and that's when I think of an intercessor, that's what I think of someone that they have that list. They have those people that they pray for regularly, those situations uh, that they plead before God and they are, they are earnest, they are faithful, they are consistent. And I, I think that's really, when you look at prayer as it's laid out in the teachings of Jesus, one of the key marks of it is consistency uh, and faithfulness. Uh, and being that way is, I think all of us can do that. We could all, we, uh, most people that are Christians would say, I wish I prayed more or more effectively. I think that's a common uh, idea that most of us have. And I, I do myself, I wish I was more consistent and more faithful at it than I am oftentimes. But I think that's where the, the intercessors, those people who begin to see that. And, and I encourage people to keep a prayer journal to when you make a request, write it down. And date it so you know when you made that request. And so when you see God answer it, then you can come back and say, wow, I did this like, what, five years ago. And now I've seen this work that God has done that I've been praying for for five years. And I think that also helps our fervency and our faithfulness on our part of understanding that God is faithful to answer the prayers that we we petition to him. Mm. So you mentioned about prayer journal. So we must have a notebook, you know, where we can write all our petitions. I think that's a good idea, at least for what I do is a list of people that I and things, situations that I pray for. And if it is a specific, like, say, a salvation of a certain person, I will date when I start praying for them so that I know whenever that happens, uh, then I can look back and say, OK, I remember that just for me. That's more for me. I don't think you need that. That God doesn't need that, obviously. But I think for us, it kind of helps build our faith when we can see mm -hmm. those requests that we've made and we see them answered. And we say, oh, OK, wow, that does work. Uh, and it does. And it's, it's, I think a lot of times we will pray fervently and we may forget what we prayed about. And then God does it. And we're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I have a notebook actually. You're right. I have a notebook of answered prayers. That's I, wonderful. That is beautiful. That's fantastic. And I have a list of all the answered prayers. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Answered prayer. Awesome. That is wonderful. And I've got long, long, long list. Long, long, <laughs> <laughs> what does that what does that do for your faithfulness when you think of that? Well, this strengthens my faith. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, God answered that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. And it's such, I mean, you, you can probably whenever maybe you do sometimes, I don't know. I go back and look it over again, just just you know, pull it up and oh, okay. He did that on this day. Wow, I forgot that. I'd forgotten because sometimes we forget all the things that God does and all the ways that he answers our prayers. Because maybe in a particular situation, things aren't going the way we think it should. Uh -huh. And uh, uh -huh. I believe that's a tool of the enemy. I think God wants us to remember how he's faithful. That's one of the key words you see throughout the Bible. Remember, 
Remember when I did this. Remember when I did that. Remember, as he reminds his people of all that he's done, uh, he continues to do oh, for yeah. us. And, and I think it's a great thing for us to remember. And uh, some people can have a photographic memory. Remember, I don't, if it's not written down anymore, I don't remember it. So <laughs> I don't know how you are. So goofy, that, you know, got, got a lot of things to do. So, yep. yes, yes. Very much oh, so. Yeah. Um, prayer journal, remember, prayer journal. I mean, answer, especially the answered prayers. And at the mm -hmm. same time, the petitions, right? Answered prayers and petitions as well. Oh, to me, that's uh, the petition. When I say that's the way of going before God, it's very similar. Uh, mm -hmm. Petition is just simply, you know, it, the prayers are you know consistent. When you petition God, you're you're asking Him to do something or to work in a specific way. That's all that really means. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if I were to petition God uh, to pray for my nation, I want our, our nation to be a godly nation. Mm -hmm. Then that's, that's that's the petition. It's mm -hmm. part of the prayer as well. It's it's kind of the same thing in a lot of ways. It's just a different way. It's my petition is God, I want you to do a work so that my leaders honor you and are faithful to you. That's that's a petition, which is also a prayer, but it's a petition to God. God, would you do that work in the life of our president and the lives of our congressmen or whomever I, I pray for? So, oh, that, wow. so you also example. pray for your so you also pray for your for your country, for your oh absolutely. Pray for your leaders. Government. That's that's a mandate oh. from in from scripture to pray for our leaders. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a even if they good. don't, even if we don't agree pray with them. It's not condemn your leaders, right? I mean, it is a very good attitude. I like that. Pray for our leaders, but not condemn them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And pray for our spiritual leaders as well, obviously. I think that's that's mm. a no-brainer for most of us. We should do that. Pray for our pastors and others whom God has put in authority yeah. over us. Mm -hmm. Petition uh, because they have a challenging job and a lot of mm -hmm. things that come their way and the enemy mm -hmm. attacks them and their families. Yeah. So pray for mm -hmm. them as well, which is yeah. the same is true for our political. We think of our political leaders a lot. You know, mm -hmm. I, I know in your country that would uh, be like uh, the prime ministers and yeah. uh, folks in parliament and those kind of, those are yeah, your leaders yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that you pray for faithfully that lead your country. King Charles. <laughs> uh, yeah, and your king. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we don't have a, we don't have a king here, but yeah, yeah that's right. I forgot mm -hmm. about that. That's true. You have that as well. And wherever mm -hmm. you are, in fact, that's what, you know, Paul talks about. He talks about that uh, many times when to believers who are being persecuted, pray for your leaders. And that seems hard. Absolutely, yes. We but it is it leaders, is what we're expected to do as, as followers in Christ. Yes. yes. Oh, thank you for stressing that point because I've seen a lot of people, heard a lot of people, and they irritate me in a way because, you know, I, I don't like people talking so negatively about their leaders. In mm -hmm. fact, they should pray for them and love them because they are still human beings. Uh, okay, so yes, you got it from um, Pastor Cooper that we need to pray <laughs> for our leaders. We should not, you know, go against them. We should go for them and bring them up to the Lord. And it's all mm -hmm. up to God to move into their lives and trust God to move into the lives of our leaders, political leaders, and move within our government. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, this is a spirit field discussion for today. Well, another question, um, Pastor. Um, <laughs> what are the hindrances? Because we heard like, oh, there are some hindrances to um to to prayers. I mean, um, there are some situations where God cannot move because of the certain circumstances in your life. Is there such a thing as that? Because I've heard a lot. Like you know, on YouTube or some some uh, well, I've read some books where and they said like, okay, there's a battle in the heavenlies, there's a battle in the air, and uh, uh, well, the the legions of mm -hmm. Saint, the, the angels, you know, of uh, Saint Gabriel, the carriers of blessing, um, are still um, way up in the ethereal world trying to battle with some of the principalities so that they can go down and bring the blessings down to you. I mean, uh, please explain that further. Well, things that hinder our uh, our prayer life, obviously unconfessed sin would be a primarily one, primary one. Uh, when we refuse to live, we live in unrepentant sin, that's going to hinder our relationship with God. It's going to hinder our prayer life because we won't, we will, it will hinder us from, praying in the will of God. We're going to pray more for what we want and what it's about. Another key one, obviously, is a lack of humility, uh, mm -hmm. is uh, praying out of a prideful spirit. I think Jesus gives that example when he talks about the prayer of the publican or the tax collector and the prayer of the Pharisee in one of his parables. 
He gives that as an example of two different attitudes of prayer. We can't, we can't pray in pride. We are, you know, we are blessed to be going before our creator. We are given that privilege. Uh, it is a privilege. It is an honor. It is a, a humbling experience to go before the creator of the universe and think that he would want to listen to someone like me and allow me to share my heart with him. Uh, that always humbles me. And that should be a consistent thing. And then, you know, self, self-centeredness self is one of those things that can get in the way or self-reliance even uh, thinking that I can just, if I just work hard enough, I can figure it out. Sometimes we have to realize there are things that are beyond us. We can't solve it uh, because we're not called to be fixers as Christians. We're called to be faithful. And that's a, a very subtle, but very powerful that that difference. We are not called to be? We're not called to be fixers of problems. We're called to be faithful to God and then let God do what God does in our lives. Uh, that is, uh, and that's that's a struggle for most men I know, and myself included, because we're the fixers. We want to solve the problem. Uh, but really what a lot of it comes, we have to come down to the reality that we can, it's beyond us, and we have to trust God to fix it, and we just be faithful where we are and serving, and God, what do you need me to do to not be a hindrance to what you're doing and let God do the work? Uh, and he does, and he's able to do the work. And a lot of times we, we short circuit that or slow the process down by trying to fix it. I always think of that. If you remember back in the book of Genesis, uh, when uh, Abraham and Sarah had been told they were going to have a child and uh, they were not young people and they decided uh, they were going to help God out. Uh, and uh, Hagar uh, and Abraham went into Hagar and, and they had, she had a son. Uh, and uh, that was how it was. And God said, that's not what I said. That's not the way it's going to happen. And it, you know, it, it ended up being a huge mess that caused a great deal of problems that I believe we're still dealing with today because of the that uh, that attempting to help God out or short circuiting God's faithfulness because, well, it doesn't make sense. Well, a lot of times when I God is going to ask me to trust him to do something, he's going to do something that doesn't make sense from a human perspective or doesn't seem possible from my perspective. But God is able to do whatever he desires in and through each situation, I have to learn to trust him in that. That's That was kind of what I was trying to get up the, across the point of that. That's one of the hindrances is that lack of, that self-reliance, that trying to fix it in my own strength rather than letting God have his way and do whatever it is he wants to do in my life, uh, which is, that's that's hard sometimes. It's hard a lot of times for some of us, especially anybody that's got uh, a good, strong self-reliance and will, and there's nothing wrong with those things unless they become a replacement for what God's doing in our mm -hmm. lives. And we realize that there's things that God is going to do that is beyond what we can do in our own strength. Mm. Is impatience also one of those hindrances? Oh, absolutely. Impatience fits in right with there. We want God because we're very much about everything fast, everything now. And God sometimes may take, you know, years to do what he desires to do mm -hmm. uh, in a situation. I mean, I've seen that happen uh, in my own family with, uh, changes in the lives of people. We pray and pray and, and eventually God does it. I've had a lot of church members that have talked to me about praying for children who have gone wayward and they pray for years, for decades, and then are finally blessed to see that child in their later years at some point finally turn the corner. You just don't know the timing of it. God does know the timing of it. And that's what we have to trust him in the timing and oh, not, yeah. not force, not strong. try to force God's hand. Because that's really when you think about it, one of the craziest ideas that we have that we think we can manipulate the creator of the universe. That's just crazy. <laughs> how how am I going to teach or, or or show God a better way than the way that God's already decided to go? Who am I to say that I know better than God knows? That's just crazy talk. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. But yet we do that a lot of times in our prayers. We try to try to push God and try to manipulate Him. And uh, I think that really stems, in all honesty. That goes back to the the idolatrous worship that many people have been a part of for many generations in in in, in the world, where we would mm -hmm. we would have an idol that people would worship, and they thought, well, if the idol, if the god that they were worshiping and the idol didn't do what it wanted to do, they would mm -hmm. control the idol, they would manipulate, they put it in the corner, or they do something to it. Mm -hmm. And I think God is reminding us that is not the way I operate. You do not manipulate me. You don't change me. I do what I desire because He is the the perfect God of the universe. And he will do exactly what he knows to be best every time. Okay. I will have to ask you this controversial question again, because I <laughs> well, have you heard about, you know, some people praying for manifestation. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and they go like, okay, wake up early, do this, or you have to sleep with this video and uh, and, and audio on and uh, let this repeat and you can manifest it, you know, manifest it. And they've got testimonies, uh, very powerful testimonies where sometimes they go like, mm -hmm. you do the 744, the 444, the 555, you write it, 10, uh, you write it 55 times in 55 days and, you know, all of those. And, you know, answers really manifest. Uh, what it was, is it a form of witchcraft or is it just a simple experiment? Please comment. I, I wouldn't go as far as say it's witchcraft. I, it seems, I, I'll just put from my perspective, and this is my perspective only, do not take this as, mm -hmm. you know, anything beyond that. Mm -hmm. That seems to be a little bit of a manipulation, an attempt to manipulate God. Uh, and that really isn't the heart of what prayer is about. The heart mm -hmm. of prayer is about submission, surrender to God's will. And mm -hmm. who God is, it's it's knowing God. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's you know, I'm not coercing him. I'm not forcing him to do something uh, because I can't. Uh, sorry, my phone's ringing in the background. I think my secretary had to step out for a little bit, but anyway, it'll it'll quit in a minute. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that's that's the heart of that. Uh, so I I don't say there's anything incessant necess necessarily wrong with that, but I do believe uh, that it is dangerous. Uh, for us uh, to to stay on that path for too long because we uh, we might miss what God is really trying to do in our lives because we're humble. not not being humble enough to say God I, I want what you want. Uh, uh, I think I mentioned the book last in our last meeting by Andrew Murray uh, mm -hmm. called Absolute Surrender, uh, mm -hmm. which I would I would if it, if I could make it required reading for every follower of Christ I would. Because uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Murray, who's been with Jesus for many years now, this was written, I believe, back in the 18th or 19th, I think the 19th century, early 19th century, mm -hmm. uh, wrote some outstanding things about what that looks like, about mm -hmm. surrendering your will to God's will. Surrendering uh, to your it will. It really stems out of the, the confession of John the Baptist mm -hmm. uh, when he's told, you know, I must, in, you know, he must increase, I must decrease. It was that kind of humility. And so from that, Murray takes that idea of what that looks like in our prayer life. And it's it's powerful. Uh, oh, he does, a, yes. well, he does an outstanding okay. job of laying. I can't even begin to begin to really say much about it because I'd be, I'd I'd cheapen it. I'd really rather people read Dr. Murray's work and 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 let that just kind of percolate in their minds and spirits a little bit. It's really good yeah. stuff. Oh, thank you so much. I think that's very enlightening. Um, what are the okay now? Why do we have to pray for God's blood to cover us? Uh, God's blood. I, I know we asked that. That's that's. Uh, I think a metaphor we use comes from. Uh, we're reminded from the sacrificial system because it is by the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. that we are saved. It is nothing else that saves us. That is our only hope. Uh, is Him, uh, and so when we are are what we are praying for when we pray by covered by the blood is that our sin is is covered by the blood. Our our self centeredness, our our self, all those things that are wrong with us. Uh, we we know that as we the sacrifices were then done to for the blood to cover the sin. And of course, ultimately with the death and uh, of our savior and Lord, his blood covers our sin. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it brings forgiveness. As the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Uh, so that's, uh, that's where that idea comes from. It is his shed blood that gives us that mercy and forgiveness. Oh, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, yes, here's the last question. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the blood of Christ is, uh, the blood of Christ is not a uh, witchcraft word. Like, oh, okay, no, no. Magic. I think it's magic. The blood of Christ it makes mm. me powerful. The blood of Christ. No. I, I, no, I don't believe so. I believe, but it is it is the most powerful, uh, one of the most powerful forces in the universe because the blood of Christ, one drop of blood mm -hmm. cleansed humanity. Mm -hmm. All the blood of, of bulls and goats and lambs and all the sacrificial system and all mm -hmm. that could not free mm -hmm. us from our sin, mm -hmm. could not deliver us, uh, but the blood of Jesus saves us. It's by his His blood that we are saved, by his stripes we are healed, as Isaiah says. Uh, I mean, it's, it's all about what he does, and that is an amazing, powerful truth that I, I, I can't wrap my mind around completely. I just can't. But I'm faith. I'm. I, I believe in, in faith that it is because of Jesus's shed blood for me that I will be able to stand before God as God's child. It has nothing to do with me being a pastor. It has nothing to do with all the things that I've done in life and all the good deeds that I think I've done. 
it is only because of Jesus and what he did on the cross at Calvary that I have any hope to stand before God. Uh, and uh, that's because that that sacrifice made things right between me and God. And only it could only be done that way. By yeah. his oh, I see. I see. Mm -hmm. I see. OK, I hope you're listening to Pastor. <laughs> I hope you're <laughs> listening to Pastor. Well, Pastor, how do we pray for salvation? And the last uh, the last question is, what is a sinner's prayer? I think those two are interrelated. So, they are. Um, yeah. So what is a sinner's prayer? Can you please lead our our viewers to to, you know, to the prayer of salvation? Well, that's obviously something we all are concerned about. Uh, it should be. Uh, there is not a formula, and that's the, the danger. We can do that. We, there are some have, have bought in the idea that there's a certain way it has to be done, mm -hmm. uh, which I do believe Scripture teaches that we, you know, as it says, you know, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That's part of that promise. Uh, that It comes in, and we look in the book of Romans, there are a lot of things that talk about that, that we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. But I think the idea of praying for salvation, I think, comes from the Holy Spirit within us. Are, are drawing us to get Christ where he's not within us before Christ, but as he is drawing us, he gives us the desire to realize our own uh, failures and shortcomings and confess our sins and know that we are unworthy and, and plead for God's salvation. Uh, I don't know that there is a specific way there have been, and there's a variety of, and they're great prayers. There's a great people have written uh, wonderful sinners prayers as, as you can find them all across the internet, but there's not, it's not a magic formula that saves a person. Uh, it's not you say these words and everything's fixed. And I think in some people's minds, we've made it that. And that is, that's a form of idolatry, in my opinion. That's wrong. Oh. But what I do believe is that as God knows, as you you pray to him in, in faith and you seek for his salvation, he responds to you. Some of those prayers may be just as simple as God save me. I am, I, I, I there's nothing I can do. I, I remember my sin, the time I prayed to receive Christ, Many, many years ago, it was pretty much I realized that there was nothing I could do to make myself right with God. I was destined for hell apart from Christ. And I just said, God, save me from myself. Save me. I, I want what Jesus has done to bring salvation to my life. I trust you in that act of, of sacrifice. God, just save me. And it was basically as simple as that. And uh, that, uh, you know. I, I don't think that has to be a certain way. I think it's good to mention those things. I think when when I lead someone in that process, there are elements of that. We talk about confession of sin. We talk about a realization that I cannot save myself. And we talk about trusting in the cross of Christ for salvation. Those are pretty much the three parts of it. Uh, most sinners prayers have in them and there's that's fine, but it's not the formula or the words per se. It has to become, it has to be a surrender of the will. It has to be a statement of the, of the spirit from the person mm -hmm. They yeah. have to say it. It's not just repeating the words. They have to mean that and understand that. And and it's mm -hmm. their their communion communion with God. I can't pray that prayer for anybody else. Everybody has to go to God themselves and seek God, seek salvation through Christ Jesus. Mm. That's wow. there's, there's a lot of videos out there about this. Yes, yes. Thank a lot you. of people will disagree like, with me, I, and that's I okay. Like they can be wrong. Yeah, I like your humility. I like your candidness. I like the humor. And that's why I guess our viewers like you. Oh, um, oh that's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, God said to not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present yes. your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. With that, we would like to close this podcast. Thank you so much once again, Pastor Michael Cooper, for spending precious time, your precious time with us, and teaching us the right way to pray. So please, I, I give you the floor, you know, at least a minute, you know, parting words, at least something that God is inspiring you to tell our viewers. <laughs> okay. Well, I just uh, pray for each of those, that anyone that sees this, hears this, uh, that you would earnestly seek uh, to follow your Savior, surrender your life to him, and let him take you on this journey of walking with our, our, him in prayer, and it will transform your life. Amen. Have a wonderful vacation. God be with you. The angels be with you as you enjoy with your family. And uh, we hope to have you back again. 
after your vacation or pause. Well, it's not vacation. It's vacation Bible school. I'm we're working with kids all week, so I don't oh. have we call it vacation Bible school because they're out on summer break. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it were vacation, but I don't have one of those planned this summer. So anyway. Yes. All right. So thank you so much. And uh, my pleasure. God, thank you so much for having me. God, God, God bless your ministry. May you increase your tribe and be fruitful in God's vineyard. Thank you, so, thank you much. so much. Once again, thank you for watching Crazy Talks with the Wise People. This is Mary Angela Talk. Once again, this is our 36th edition and we will be doing more. Thank you so much. And till next Wednesday. Bye for now.